is the uh, yeah. Town of Woodbridge uh, Board of Finance regular monthly meeting for November 19th, 2015. And the first item on the agenda is public comments. I assume there are no public comments. Okay. Next is the Administrative Officer, Director of Finance Report, Tony. Thank you, Matt. The uh, uh, results for the uh, expenditures and revenues through October is a uh, budgetary surplus of just under $80,000 which leaves us with a $4.37 million fund balance at the end of the year, just under 9.5% of our projected annual expenses. Uh, a couple of items for you to uh, consider first is a surplus of $52,000 in intergovernmental revenues. Uh, this might change because there's been a recent, nothing's been announced, but um, the first announcement was that we would be reduced by $16,000 in uh, state funds, uh, mostly pilot funds, and um, the uh, we do have a, f a FEMA reimbursement coming of just under seventy thousand dollars. So the net was about fifty-two thousand dollars. I'm not sure what this next round will bring. I've heard uh, different proposals from different governors. Proposal, for instance, had the Pequot grant in there. Mm -hmm. That's about fifteen thousand um, dollars. But there, there are other proposals. I'm not sure what the actual is going to be, so we'll keep on top of that. I don't know if you've heard anything else. But uh, on expenses, the Parks Department will have a surplus of about $10,000. Uh, we had a new position in that department, and uh, we uh, didn't hire it right away on July 1. And so that's for uh, that position. And as you know, the debt service is a $12,000 savings due to a refunding. Those are our major items so far this year. Okay. Any questions for Tony? What status, Tony? Um, I've given them all the information. They came out for their field review and finished um, in October, well, end of October. And um, we're expecting a draft, a final draft for the, um, as she put it, for me to review over our Thanksgiving holiday, which I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully by uh, beginning of next week, we'll have our final draft. Okay. No problems? Nope. No problems. All right, we have a, we were all handed a black book. Um, we have capital budget meetings on Tuesday, uh, December 1st, and on Thursday, December 3rd, right here at 6 o'clock. And they don't look very, uh, we've, we've kind of cut them back. We used to have a lot more, and uh, we've cut them back. So it shouldn't be that long meeting. This is, of course, a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. So. And then, of course, if uh, you're available, um, in, the, in between that, Wednesday the 2nd of December, uh, at 4 o'clock, there is a Board of Selectmen meeting with the Toll Brothers to discuss various... You're going to talk about that maybe in your I report? I will. I'll All talk right. about that. I'll we'll, we'll talk about that. So if you can make that, I'm sure that'll be interesting, too. Um, anything else, Tony? Uh, there is another. The... Um, oh, that financing? Yes. So we've uh, solicited quotes on rates for financing for the purchase of uh, the fire department pumper truck and the winning bidder was Chase at a rate of 1.625%. Uh, so that's a five-year in arrears payment. Mm -hmm. it's, a, um, it's, very, um, it's a very good rate, actually, yeah. considering all the, the quotes we got. And um, so it's a little over $30,000 in interest over five years. That's not bad. So we'd like a motion. Million million dollar truck. Yeah, motion. Could, yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, approve and accept the um, the uh, winning bidder of Chase at a, at a rate of 1.625 for five annual payments in arrears for purposes of financing the new pumper truck, which is coming soon. Yes, it should be here um, any day now. Okay. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Other than can't beat that rate. No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Funding requests. We have a couple. Okay. Let's see. First, the first one is for the fire department. I guess one of their trucks, engine nine, is needs some work. Um, springs, brake jobs, etc., etc., etc. And the um, the amount is twenty-eight thousand two twenty-eight. Correct. Request for funding 151605. Um, what I would like to say is, as, and this is consistent with what we've done in the past, um, 
They haven't spent that line item yet, the repair line item, of course, we're responsible for it, but I don't like funding things from our contingency fund until we know what their overall budget's going to be. So mm -hmm. I would, um, I don't know, I guess we would just, can we just table this, Tony, or should we well, just approve it? I th I th no, I think you, um, you have to acknowledge that they have to make the repairs. Oh, yeah. So um, I think the... We can move acceptance and then vote it. I don't know how to do it. In other words, we're going to pay for this. I right. just, I, it's just this is consistently what we've done. So we're they've, got, they've still got money left in their line item. And, and so you're, you're, uh, if I understand it, are you s suggesting that um, they expend their line item? This is me. I don't know what the rest yeah. of the board thinks. But. No, I agree. Yeah, I we, agree. We've made that decision. Right, we've done the past. Right. What, what is this early? Well, repairs have already been made, I'm sure. So, you know. so I, I guess the, um, should, so if their department, that line goes over. Well, you'll, you'll, you've got to deal with it. We've got to see how their overall budget comes out. If there's we'll money left over, we can make it up in, within that budget, or, or, we, or we can move money from another point. department, but why, okay. can, why tap the contingency fund okay. at this point? Right. So, so I think the, the Board of Selectmen approved it in this form, right. 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 coming right. from contingency. Right. Right. So, so we don't have that, to approve it. So perhaps you, if the Board right. of Finance doesn't act, it will just right. automatically okay. come from... What, I wonder budget. what we did the oh, last time. So I remember the conversation, and you, Karen, brought this up, saying it's a little early in right. the year yeah, right. for us to use contingency when we haven't really gone through that. And we've done this with other departments so also. Yeah. I think from, yes. the, de from the department's perspective, um, I guess just the important thing is to acknowledge that they had a large Absolutely. unanticipated Thank repair fine. and that they, have, okay. that they would go forward with that repair and that that could impact this line. Well, if I, I guess remember, when, the when they came to the Board of fi uh, Selectmen, they, were, they had already fixed it. So, I mean, it was, it's a moot point. They, they did it. it. Yeah, I think it's They did it without it. approval. So, I mean, because they've got... They had to. They've they got a line item yeah. with $60,000 sure. in it right. to repair their truck, so right. they used it. So, right. But I, I don't I don't like moving money, that, that amount of money, at this point, until we, number one, we could fund it out of their budget if there's money left over, or there could be another budget where we can okay. move money, Tony can move money, and so I, I, I don't... I don't I don't think we should even act on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they just table it for yeah yeah. yeah. Well, but I think the minutes should reflect that we understand oh, yeah. the need. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we support that need. It's just the right. the funding. The repairs have been done, so they're going to be paid for. It. One way or another, the town's going to pay for right. them. It's, it's just, just the source of the, the way department. we decide to fund it. If we're okay. going to move money from other departments, if we're going to move money within their department. Okay. So I, I don't I don't really want to move money out of our contingency fund at this point. Do you so. agree, David? Yeah. There are. Who will determine where the money comes from? Tony. Okay. Tony will make a recommendation to us if, if need be. And if need be, and we have to tap yeah, up, maybe we'll do it there. See if that's okay. nice. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I... I well, well, in other words, at the end of the, as, right. the, as the year comes to an end, if, right. if another department has a, a, a large surplus, Tony can move money from one department to another department to pay for it. We so could. He does I that generally don't do that this early in the year no, because no, no, it's right. so early in the right. year. And, yeah. and we shouldn't either. That's, yeah. that's, I think that's the only... No, we absolutely acknowledge... If the truck had to be repaired, it was repaired, it will be paid for, but we'll determine how, when, and where it's going to mm -hmm. be paid for. So if that line item goes into the red, it goes okay. into the red. Okay, that's as fair. As long as the bottom line, as long as the budget stays that's fair. In, in a plus, we yeah. don't have to do this right now. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Next is um, a request for funding uh, for, I like this word, it's for traffic calming. <laughs> yes, I have not seen that. Before. I've never heard that before. Right. But they're going to calm down the traffic, which they should, because yes. it's like Indianapolis going down that road. Right? <laughs> so um, I will move. Basically, what it is, they're going to put speed bumps on Landon Street. Mm -hmm. I guess speed bumps or speed humps. What do they call them? I think they're bumps. Well, I know in Hamden they're humps. Yeah. <laughs> I think it depends on it's how they are. Yeah. This one is speed humps. Humps. Yeah. So there will be signs too to warn you about humps. So I'm going to move acceptance of uh, request for funding 151606 in the amount of $4,800. Second. And that's for the engineering. For, yeah, yeah, for engineering. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah, it's for engineering to see how much it's going to cost. So, um, all right. Is there any discussion on this? I just need to let you know I have to recuse myself since um, Durandagon is a personal friend. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Not a problem. Any uh, any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Uh, hold on. Nineteen. 
All right. Approval of minutes. I will move acceptance of the minutes of our regular monthly meeting of October 15th as presented. Second. Is there any discussion, corrections, adjustments, etc.? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Next is proposed meeting dates, and we're going to vote on these, but if by chance mm -hmm. something crazy happens, uh, we can always... We like to keep them... Um, we like to keep them where they are because people would know that it's the third Thursday of the month, but if something were to change, we can change it. So I'll move acceptance of the listed proposed meeting dates for 2016 for the Board of Finance. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Ellen. Thank you. So I'd like to start with um, upcoming events, and the first one is this evening at 7 o'clock. At the library, we're continuing our partnership with Long Wharf Theatre. The play at this time is Measure for Measure, so um, if you love Shakespeare, this is, the, this is the place to be. I hope some of you will come tonight. And um, the, uh, this, the costume designer is going to be there. Apparently, the group that's doing the Shakespeare play is in New York, and they're extraordinary, as, as are the costumes and the sets. So I think it'll be a really, really interesting presentation. And there'll also be um, a reading of some scenes from the play. I think it's going to be a Yale group that does that with the actors. So uh, again, this is a, we started this last year with Long Wharf. It, it was great, very successful. And also there'll be a Woodbridge night at the play. I believe it's December 10th when there's discounted tickets and a cocktail party reception for Woodbridge residents at that time. So I hope to see everybody there. Um, this week on Tuesday was the second in our Wisdom of Woodbridge lecture series. As you recall, last month was Mary Papazian, the president of SCSU. Tuesday night, Rob Klee, who's the commissioner of energy and environmental protection here in Woodbridge, for the state, lives here in Woodbridge. And he presented his topic was talking trash. And it was a fascinating update on recycling. I agree. I was, was it? It was, it was terrific. It was terrific. He was so interesting. There's so much to learn about recycling, and obviously there's a lot of uh, a lot of learning going on. So we'll keep updated on that, and we'll be focusing on some of that here in Woodbridge. Um, as Matt mentioned, on December 2nd, the Board of Selectmen is having a special meeting, continuing our discussion of the Country Club of Woodbridge. And rather than have a joint special meeting, which we've done in the past, we are inviting the Board of Finance, any of you who can join us. It's from 4 to 6 o'clock. We are accommodating um, two of our selectmen, Maria Kane and Tony Anastasio, needed an earlier meeting. And we wanted to make sure all of the selectmen could be there. At the meeting where we went over the various um, options or scenarios that were possible, if you recall, some of the selectmen had said they wanted to ask Toll some questions, and Toll Brothers is available to come that evening. We may also have an analysis of some other scenarios. Um, selectman Maria Kane submitted some ideas, and Tony is taking a look at that. But I'm not sure if we'll be ready on that or not, but we certainly welcome and encourage Board of Finance members to come because, as we all know, this is so significant for the budget and budget decisions that you'll be making. Uh, I'm continuing to focus on economic development. Um, we don't have a huge area for economic development, but it's very important. It's one of the ways we can alleviate the tax, the property taxes on our residences. We had our first ever economic development workshop last month. It was sponsored by the New Haven Chamber of Commerce and led by the Connecticut Economic Resource Center. All board and commission, or just about all board and commission members were invited. I know that um, all of you were. It was very well attended and really helped us understand our role here in Woodbridge in the larger economy, both national and world economy. And one of the important lessons that we learn from it is to really focus on business retention first and business development second. But there were also other very interesting ideas that came out of it, so it was uh, well worthwhile. I visited, I'm still visiting local merchants and businesses <coughs> to try to help promote them and see how we can be helpful. I visited Dean's Hair Salon, which is a, a lovely place on June Street. And um, also in his building is Hong's Nail Salon and Olga's Salon. So it's uh, we have a good little... Um, beauty hub there. Um, 
we had another successful business after hours. This was our second one. It was at Grimaldi's Pizza. They had just, they're revamping their menu. It was a good opportunity for them to promote themselves. And these are good networking opportunities for our business community. And we also held a workshop for businesses on how to do press releases. Carol Rosner here in town led that workshop for them. Some of you were able to attend the FOI, this is um, off economic development now. We had the um, FOI, Freedom of Information Informational Meeting, which it, I think is important to do every year or two because as we all know, the Freedom of Information Act is not intuitive. We all make mistakes and work very hard to comply with it. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Tom Hennick, who's the, the um, public affairs and public education officer, was here. He gave us a good overview. It's always good to hear the rules again. Um, I asked him about the requirement that special meetings be posted on the website, because at a special meeting, I believe it was our joint special meeting, uh, two of our selectmen said that they believed we were not in compliance with FOI, at which point I it wasn't sure about it, so I offered to cancel the meeting. They wanted to go ahead, but I did want to clarify it uh, with FOI, and Tom Hennick reviewed all the facts and said that, in fact, we had complied. Uh, we want to make the postings as public as possible, as early as possible, but in that case, there had been no violation. Something else that's very important for our town is um, its developments at West River, and uh, because the West River is uh, one of the major sources of flooding, down in the Amity District, and people are very concerned about it. A major initiative is the removal of the Pond Lily Dam, and that has begun. So there was a big event this month, and it was um, very, very significant. And also, it's part of the West River Coalition, of which we're a part, cleaning up the West River, hopefully from its source all the way down to Long Island Sound. I continue to focus on celebrating our community. You know, we all talk about the, what, one of the things we do lack in Woodbridge is a town center where people can meet and greet each other. Although for many of us, the town center is Amity Meat Market, and I will say as an aside, it reopened this week. Oh, so, and it looks beautiful, shiny, new and expanded. Uh, but so many people in our community do so much on a volunteer basis. and. A couple of weeks ago was the dedication of a pavilion built by the Boy Scouts in honor of a deceased scout, Alfredo Canapari. The pavilion is at Camp Whiting. It's just beautiful. And the person who spearheaded it is Bob Tucker, who's an architect in town. He did the architectural design, and it was all volunteer, volunteer materials, volunteer labor. labor and. Um, it was a very impressive and moving tribute. The family was there. It was, it was beautifully done. The Conservation Commission led a walk. Actually, it was the same day. It was the Bishop Loop behind the Darling House. And I encourage you, if you haven't been there, it's just a beautiful trail. I also visited Beecher Road School to see the new UV pool filter. That filter was a gift of the Woodbridge Aquatic Club, and it's been very successful. It greatly diminishes the use of chlorine and chemicals in the pool. It makes it much more hospitable for everyone, but particularly people with asthma. And the children are really enjoying that. And I thank the Aquatic Club again for their generosity. Um, tr truck or Treat was a great success once again this year. There were at least 2,000 people all smiling. <laughs> Children, parents, just a great, great event. The Woodbridge Volunteer Fire Association was, um, did a wonderful job. They included fireworks, which made it even more spectacular. And very, um, a great community event. Today I attended the Friends of the Library, had a ribbon cutting for their book alley, which is in the corridor that connects the old Woodbridge Room Library to the new building. And it's, set, it's, it's just lovely. Again, it's so impressive what they've done. And it's open all the time now. You can, you can contribute books. It really encourages you to contribute your old books and purchase new books at minimal prices. I can attest to the great children's collection. It was great till I got there. I bought several <laughs> books for my granddaughter. But it's, it's <laughs> wonderful. It's really a, a great addition. And I thank the friends so much for doing that. I also initiated, after seeing the, the um, Boy Scout Pavilion, it really prompted me to do something I've been thinking about since I became First Selectman, and that is 
a person of the month recognition. We have so many employees and so many residents who will go above and beyond. We, it's almost impossible to know where to begin. But seeing what Bob Tucker did with the Boy Scout Pavilion um, encouraged me. So Bob Tucker is our first person of the month. He was in November. And we have so many to, to choose from for December. We're kind of working on that. Um, I think that's that's um, most of it. I imagine that Sandy and Matt in the liaison reports will be talking about the budgets mm -hmm. at the two schools, which will have significant impact for us, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that then. And mm -hmm. thank you for the opportunity, Matt. Okay. I, I will say that I thought the FOI session was informative, and I've been to it many times. But um, um, you know, Tom is just a great speaker, and you'd think FOI was boring, but I mean, the stories that he tells are really amazing. <laughs> so I would really yeah. encourage people to go, if not every year, every other year. Um, and uh, so thank you, Ellen, for doing that. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, liaison reports. Um, Amity, uh, for those of you who don't know, Jack Levine is going to retire as of, uh, huh? as of June 30th. So they'll be looking for a new finance director. I think there's, hopefully there's somebody in-house that might qualify, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack's been a tremendous asset at the Amity. For those of you, us who were around, when we were going, we were going through finance directors like, uh, you know, every other, every <laughs> other month in the Well, finance we directors. haven't found any stuff drawers since he took those. No, 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 no. We, didn't find <laughs> bills, we didn't find bills, and Jack's been a, Jack's been a tremendous yeah. asset. And, and uh, he, as, I, as I told him that night, uh, he allowed me to sleep again. You know, mm -hmm. I spent many sleepless nights during that time uh, uh, with all that was going on in the Amity, and he's allowed us to sleep. So he, he's a he's a wonderful guy. So he will be missed. But I think he's left the place so so strong. Um, whoever takes over will just have to you know, follow follow his uh, his lead. So uh, Amity's uh, budget is fine. Um, as of, uh, this is as of, let's see, the end of October, there's about a $645,000 surplus. Um, primarily, it's, it's always, it's always uh, special ed and transportation. It's a very tough figure to, uh, to come up with, so, uh, but they do keep us informed on a monthly basis. Um, on, a, on a budgetary problem type note, as Ellen was alluding to, um, Woodbridge, in October, they come up with the allocation based on the enrollment. Woodbridge, uh, Woodbridge's uh, student population went up by seven from 691 to 698, which in and of itself doesn't seem to be too bad, but Orange went down by 44, Bethany went down by 22, so there was an overall drop of 59, but we have an increase of seven. Which increases our percentage of the Amity budget from 29.784 <coughs> to 30.871, or an increase of 1.087%. And considering that it's a $44 million budget, we're probably talking a half a million dollars that we'll have to come up with. So when people say to you that uh, age restricted housing, uh, we, I had this discussion the last time we met. <laughs> And they were talking about there was a proposal to build large houses, and uh, I said the only problem with that is you're going to have kids. Oh, we don't have kids. Those people. Well, I disagree. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe people with two-year-old kids won't buy those houses, but people with kids, you know, maybe in their four people in their forties who have kids in the junior high and high school will buy them. And and as you can see, it doesn't take much to uh, to spur on the uh, the uh, so again. Oh, then the argument, the other argument I heard was, well, the, the people who are, are going to move into the age-restricted housing are going to sell their houses and kids are going to move into those houses. Well, that's going to happen regardless. If you look at the number of people who have moved to the uh, Orange property Project and have moved to the, uh, I know some people who have moved to the um, Prospect, and I have friends who have moved to Oxford with the uh, free age restricted housing so regardless of whether Woodbridge offers age restricted housing these people are going to move and sell their houses mm -hmm. it's just a question of maybe capturing some of these people in, in an, well, in an excellent keep project keep keeping them as part right. of right and, and these people community. want to live in Woodbridge so but I'm sure we'll be having a lot of debate on that just just to take that this enrollment thing a little bit further looking ahead 
Um, Bethany's school population is dropping, it's plummeting. They only have 38 kids in kindergarten as we speak. Right. Oh. They have 46 in first grade, 53 in second grade. So their total elementary school population is 384. Ours is 775, which is double. And orange is, is 1176. And look, and again, this is, you can't pin this, but Bethany next year, their 12th grade class moving out of Amity is 75. Their 6th grade class coming in is 63, so they're going to lose 12 more, assuming nobody else moves into Bethany. Orange, <laughs> you don't know, Orange, Orange's outgoing student population is 191, 207 are coming in from the 6th grade in Orange, so uh, they're going to have an increase. Woodridge, outgoing 123, incoming 127. But after the 127 that's in the 6th grade now at Beecher, we have 98, 103, 109, 109, 107, 102. So there's smaller classes, but again, you can't, you can't count on that. Kids are going to come in and people are going to come in and go out. So, But as, as of right now, it looks like next year won't be, shouldn't be as much of a hit as this year. And, and Orange should get uh, perhaps uh, banged around a little bit. So, um, so this impact is for this year? Yeah. Okay. Well, for... 16, for 17. Next year. For next, for next year. year. That doesn't include okay. a budget increase. That's just right. That's, that's just based on the budget that we currently yeah. have. So it, it's going to be a hit. And unfortunately, it's, it's the first. We can't complain because year after year after year, ours kept going down while Orange and Bethany's okay. kept going up. So yeah, yeah. this is the year we're going to. This is the year we're, we're getting caught up with. So unfortunately, it's something we're going to have to deal with. So, and I, I don't think the news is great at Beecher either, which I'm sure no. Sandy will be going over. So. We're going to have a challenging year to cover mm -hmm. some of the uh, education issues, yes. which we'll talk about. Paul? Um, well, there's not a whole lot to report except for the ladder truck committee has been formed. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're moving forward with designing the ladder truck, um, and I'm sure it'll come up for Discussion. For discussion, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Did you have anything to do? Did you, did you know this? I didn't know that the committee had been formed. Oh. I don't think it, no. I didn't know that. Yeah. The committee I know. The how, many, how many people are on it? And is it just the fire commission, or is that there are some uh, plus fire commission members? There's only one fire commission member, I think. Okay. Uh, and the rest are uh, from the chief's uh, team. Sure. I think there were six people. I always thought we. Okay. That was. I always thought that was worked through. I, d I don't really know on something like that, or if it's the fire no, commission. It's, that it's does just it. a design. Yeah, truck design. Yeah. That, that, uh, that just understand, and Paul, you're new to this. There, there's a lot of strong feelings about the ladder truck uh, across. I mean, again, the, the pumper, the, the, the main line trucks. There's a, but there's a lot of. There's always been a lot of discussion about whether they really do need a million and a half dollar ladder truck. So. I'm sure it'll be an interesting, once they design it, it'll be an interesting discussion, but mm -hmm. we'll deal with that with the side. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Karen? <laughs> well, I did report on human services. I had a conflict that night, but um, the holiday fair was a huge success. They actually, they all the numbers aren't in, but it looks like they raised at least $6,000, which was 50% over last year. It was, and they're, looks like they're almost growing out of the gym. Um, the youth um, director received a $15,000 grant from AT&T, so that, they're very excited about that. That's going to be used as a job bank for students to um, prepare students for job readiness. That's true. So, yeah. The, um, the fuel assistance program is going on, and they're preparing holiday baskets. They're still looking for donors um, to adopt a family for the holidays. and. Um, other than that, the um, department is extremely busy, but all is well and um, under control. And I, I wasn't able to go to EMS either. Got okay. quite a bit. Sandy. Okay. Um, the library commission met um, on Monday, November 9th, and there are a couple of developments there of interest. Um, Pam Molanski, who has been um, a long time uh, person as our uh, in the children's library um, is leaving and so they are posting that position 
um, internally and they think that there is potentially an internal candidate for that position. Um, but um, Eric wants to take um, some of the funds that he has to actually create a teen librarian um, to focus on creating more of the maker culture and focus on STEM, um, which is science, technology, um, engineering. engineering, and I forget what the M is. Math. 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 Sorry. That's why we um, need more of it. That's true. <laughs> 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 and, um, and actually, this came up at the um, the Board of Ed Finance Committee meeting, the whole STEM and maker culture, and I really suggested that they coordinate efforts together in terms of programs that they decide to start. So um, Eric feels that having a teen librarian will make a big difference in terms of being able to address the interests and needs um, of that uh, population. Then um, Eric and some of his staff also attended the New England Library Association meeting. Um, Eric had a chance to meet Todd, so that was very nice. Um, but he felt that um, the most beneficial component, in addition to meeting um, other colleagues, was that um, what people are doing in terms of having professional development days um, for their staff, um, and he actually proposed that and the commission approved as long as it was coordinated with Tony um, to have a professional development day one day a year and it was requested that it be done during a slow time for the library um, and in conjunction with that um, the importance of having really good job descriptions and using those as the basis of evaluation and so he is planning on rewriting all the job descriptions for the library so he's putting off the evaluation period for the employees until that process is actually done so um, he's really looking for opportunities to improve the operations and the relationship with the staff um, he also talked about, they also talked about the, um, uh, the Long Wharf um, uh, connection um, and very supportive of doing this and feels that that's a definite benefit in terms of programming for the town. Um, then the um, Board of Ed Finance Committee um, need meeting was also that same evening. And um, uh, Al Pulo is actually um, out on leave right now. And so there is a um, substitute um, uh, finance director there for Beecher Road School. Um, his name is Art Pool, um, same initials. Um, he's actually a retired finance person, many years of experience. <coughs> um, and uh, Dr. Stella is using him um, on an as-needed basis. Um, there's a daily rate. Um, and he's also using um, some grant funding to help support this. Um, so n new money will not be needed for that. However, um, the special education budget um, is resulting right now in a projected $256,000 deficit um, for um, the school. And um, it is something that we will have to deal with, not just this year, but they're going to have to add this into their budget for next year. And again, in addition to um, whatever other increases we would see due to salaries and benefits. So this will be a very challenging year. Because they got a new contract also, right? Yes, so. right, right. But I think if I remember, we met with him, we knew them of course monthly. Yes. I think he's saying that the, the salary increase will be offset by the HSA or something to a certain extent, uh, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true. Budget. Yeah. yeah. So, that's it. That is it. Okay. Anything else? Well, before we adjourn, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Same, Same to you. you. We'll see you uh, December 1st. December 1st. First, first second, first, and third. It's, it's the first. First, second, and third. We're really not like each other. <laughs> <laughs> we better like So, well, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you.